elimination does not necessarily mean zero COVID. It means zero tolerance for cases of COVID, so stamping it out. We will continue to try to stamp it out. Um, when we fail, uh, we'll, we've, we've emphasised, and I said publicly on the 12th of August, we may fail. We're, we're taking an ambitious strategy, but we lose nothing by doing that. In fact, it keeps our options open. But we may find that it's not possible. We may find we have to move to a suppression strategy, but it won't be something we'll, we won't think in advance, oh, let's give up and let's stop trying to live the way we are. Um, it'll just happen if it does happen. And, um, but unfortunately, it will not be good because we will all have to live a more restricted life. Um, people will have to shield from each other, particularly older people in winter. Yeah. Um, we'll probably all have to wear masks. And a lot of people will get sick and die, and not just from COVID, but also from other diseases which won't get treated in a timely way because our health system will be so um, overwhelmed. So we're, what we're saying is let's do our best. Unfortunately, the Delta variant makes things more difficult. But if we can achieve a really high vaccination coverage, we still believe we've got a good chance of pulling it off. We, we may not manage to stamp it out, but we may manage to control in different ways, which is the next step away, I, and that's what we'll have to watch closely. I understand what you're saying. I, I, I understand what you're saying. I suppose I just make the comment that that is going to be a massive psychological change for the New Zealand population. New Zealanders have become um, very uh, persuaded by the idea that one case in the community is disasterville, um, and uh, you know, I just so make that point that it's going to take quite a cultural, um, psychological change in our population. At the moment, one case of COVID is, uh, was it disasterville, you said? I mean, we've seen what's happened. In fact, our current outbreak all goes back to that one limousine driver in Sydney. It's spilt over into Victoria, Queensland, ACT, and now New Zealand. It all comes from that one case. But of course, if we have a really high vaccination coverage, um, the scenario is quite different. If, if, if we do. Yeah, Could I, I just reflect one more issue, that it is challenging for our country to live with uncertainty and that we make the best strategy of the day, and it's challenging for all of us to know we need to continue to live with the uncertainty around this. And I really reflect what you're saying, that, you know, it is hard for our people. But I think what would be so helpful is if you were able to, to lay out you know, alternative scenarios so that people can have a glimpse of what the future might be like, given some of that uncertainty. Because, you know, while I respect the work you're doing and the, the challenges you face, to say that, you know, we can't plan anything in six months, anything could change, we just don't know, um, mm. you know, it doesn't deliver the certainty that, that people would really crave from you. I would just say there's one thing more important than certainty, and that's honesty. And, uh, Unfortunately, we do have to live with uncertainty. We all have to do it all the time, of course. I mean, no one knows whether they're going to live for many years or whether they'll die tonight. Um, and, but this is a particular situation which is so dynamic. And, I mean, who would have imagined that Sydney was in the situation it was, you know, two months ago or three or four months ago? No one would have imagined that they are now, they're now they've been in lockdown now for two months. It's going to go on for weeks or months ahead. Um, so it's a very difficult and I think we've really got to explain to people why we have to live with uncertainty with this pandemic.